All right, guys, I'm Rabir. And I'm Matt. And this is Sound Like on Anderson's TV. Hi, Matt. Hi, Rabir. How are you? All good, all good. Are you? I am. I'm up for some psychedelic indie rock yeah that's what i'm feeling well today's going to be a good video for you awesome we're going to be trying to sound like the awesome kevin parker of tame impala this one has actually been really 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 requested it has um and it's taken us a while to get around to it but we're here today to try tame impala are one of those bands that i think everybody likes they've got a, a vibe about They're them very very listenable some really good guitar Super sounds hip. Yeah. Um, and just generally an easy going, easy sort of vibe about them. You know, great to listen to when you just, you know, Saturday morning, having your Frappa Chapa Lapidolino, <laughs> just being to your vintage shop to buy some new Cruising new down threads. the motorway with some aviators on in the sun. Yeah, you know, going down the Pacific Coast Highway, chilling, it's all, that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but we'll give it a go and see how we do. Let's do it. So, Kevin Parker. This is what we need. Typically doesn't play one of these. <laughs> no. All these. Um, he plays a Rickenbacker guitar. Mm -hmm. which but he also plays Jazz Masters. He does. So, we stock uh, Rickenbacker basses, but we don't have any of their guitars in stock. No. Which narrows it down quite considerably to a Jazz Master. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is right here. Ta -da. However, this is £1,500. Yeah, so we blow our entire budget on that guitar. I think he actually has, and apparently it's another member of the band's, and it's the Jay Maskis uh, Dinosaur Junior guy, his SIG. And they're yeah. only about 320 quid. But we can't get one. But we don't have one stock. So we needed just a Jazzmaster, but this kind of pickup is what we need. Yeah, the Jazzmaster single coils, yes. which aren't P90s. So a rather convenient twist of fate, we couldn't find a Jazzmaster from Fender or Squire in the store that was of a decent budget, no, friendly price. they're all a bit much. So we found these G&L. They're, they're beautiful, really. And everybody knows the, the association between G&L and Fender anyway. This is the G&L Domini. Tahini. Tahini. Are... Tahini. <laughs> Tahini. <laughs> Made in Indonesia, featuring all American parts. Yeah, yeah, literally all American parts, the bridge, the pickups, the pots, everything. Um, I think we have to go with this one though, it's more appropriate yeah. style wise. But what a find! I, I can't believe it actually. Well budget friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we still have £1,150 to play with. And is this the first time we've used GNL? It is the first time we've used GNL. All the first here. There you go. Into the world of amplifiers. Into the world of amplifiers. Right, so the guitar is 519 Yeah, we thought it was cheaper than it is, but we it's did. not. More affordable. And we also but, found this one, which. Here we go. Ta -da. Is closer because he uses one with a rosewood fretboard, and this, and this is, is not rosewood. Ginger snap this fretboard. <laughs> dog dog biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he uses uh, one with a rosewood board. This is not rosewood. It's called but it, cherry, but it looks Brazilian. a little Brazilian, Brazilian cherry, cherry wood, fretboard. Right. Yeah. So it looks a little bit more similar than maple. So we're, we're hoping that tonally it has yeah. an effect. So we've as well. gone we've gone fretboard wood over paint color because we think that makes more of a difference to the sound. Yeah. Um, Who knows? Right. But also, moving on to amplifiers, he's yes. been known to use Fender Twins, uh, use this Roland Jazz Chorus, and also Vox AC30. Which leads us logically to this, which would be the Vox AC15. Greenback loaded. There you go. Which so is 550. 550. Yeah. Which actually, I thought we'd be a little bit. So a 1,069. 1,070 right quid. Yeah. So we've got how much left? Whoa. 430 quid yeah. to buy about, I, th I think we need about six pedals. Yeah, so we need a phaser. Yeah, we, we need, need a fuzz face. A delay. A blues driver. Yeah. And a compressor. And a compressor. Yeah. That's it. So, MXR is a good shout. We've got a Rogue Pete. MXR is a good shout, mainly okay. because um, for each pedal you're talking around £100. So right. you've got a phase 95, which is great because. How much are they? Uh, they're about, I think it's at eight, 99 pounds. Okay. There's fine. also the MXR Mini, it's the fuzz face though, it's exactly the same as a normal one, it's 100 pounds as well. Fine. That's 200 pounds. Yeah, so we got 230 left. And then we need... 230 for three more pedals. We need delay. 
we could just get a really we need a slapback delay. delay yeah tape machine tape, machine, tape yeah. machine that's like 50 quid yep so that would be 180 left for two pedals we need a compressor we could get the Dynacomp Mini, which is another 100 pounds. Okay, so that would be 130 for one pedal. Yeah. And it is, we've got phase. Oh, we've got the first phase, we've got the phaser, got the compressor, and got the, blues the delay. Driver. And the blues driver. Which is over here. Which blues means? driver, Boss BD2 is 75 pounds. 75 pounds, which means I think we, we might have just got it all under budget. So we've and got... actually, what's really good is we're using a couple of the pedals that he uses himself. Yeah, so we've got the MXR Phase uh, 90 with a Phase Mini. Yeah, the Dynacomp Mini. Dynacomp Mini. We've got the Fuzz Face Mini. Yeah. That's 300 pounds. We've got the BD2. Which is 75, 375. And then we've got the uh, Tone City Tape Machine. Which is, I'm going to guess, 50 quid. So that's yeah. about 425. With the um, GNL Tahini with the <laughs> and the AC15 Greenback loaded, yes. we literally are just scraping on the budget. I think we're about £1,480. Uh, you're going to play a P bass through a Fender Rumble, right? I am indeed, yes. So let's go see what it sounds like. We're back in the video room. Yes, we are in this magical psychedelic experience to sound like Kevin Parker of Tame Impala. Impaled in tone with Tame Impala. We're totally tamed and totally impaled. Uh... <laughs> in all seriousness, though, um, these are some of my favorite episodes where we do these kind of like experimental, like indie psychedelic -y kind of bands. Like the one that comes to mind for me was Black Keys when we Black did that. Black Keys was great. Because there's, it's... Another, there's a few others as well. Yeah, like there was strokes we did as well that was similar and it's like funny. Radiohead and stuff. It's when yeah, there's loads yeah. of sounds to get cool. You yeah. know when it sounds just like the record, you're like... It's Gah. all about like, oh, no, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we sit, we sit there. One day we'll like, we'll film the whole thing and just put it up and you can get really bored. Yeah, thankfully, the, although the tones are very specific, the makeup of what they are is quite straightforward. You know, it's yeah. clean, phaser, compressed, with, and then yeah. the one song with the fuzz. But and we always find that when it's getting the main sound, I think especially that, that the fuzz tune, mm. the first song we did, was the hardest. It took yeah. us the longest. We're getting the, getting the right amount of fuzz and the right amount of amp. And having the right order, because we had to put the fuzz before the blues driver. Yeah, to, and to originally that, we did. It was the other way around. Yeah, it was yeah. hard. So let's go through the rig that we chose. I'll be Mr. Switchy Button Ons. <laughs> this is the GNL Dahini, but I've been calling it the Tahini because. Tahini is one of the key ingredients to making good hummus. However, tahini and gingerbread would not mix. No, they wouldn't. But yeah, in this, this case, is, they do. This is Brazilian cherry fretboard, and we were saying it looks like gingerbread. Or looks dog, like a or, type of biscuit. Or dog biscuits, yeah. Yeah. I think everyone should just go back to using rosewood and ebony, personally. But either way, it did the yeah. job, and it was closer tonally than a maple uh, fretboard. Yes. But the point here was that um, although it uses Rickenbacker guitars, it's also been seen to use Jazzmasters. And that we were saying it's the it's the Jay Mascus Dinosaur Junior one, mm. uh, which we didn't have in stock today. And every jazz master we could find was way over budget. Mm -hmm. And this is where GNL came swooping down to our rescue. It did, um, with these sort of wide spaced single coils. Single coils that yeah, uh, to be honest, it achieved the tone that we needed straight off the bat. Yeah. Um, that's and actually actually a really really great guitar. It yeah. Wouldn't, it wouldn't have sprung to mind straight away. Built but... in Indonesia, straight out of the box. It was easy to tune. It stayed in tune. It was in tune with a trem. Well. All American parts. Don't forget. Yeah. Uh, I haven't struggled to keep this in tune or play it, so that's really good. Two plus points. Um, so that's running into the tape machine, Tone City. Yep. Which is a firm favourite. Affordable. Sound great. Yeah. Absolutely. And then MXR Classic 108 Fuzz, which is the. Uh, it's a fuzz face, but in a small box. Mm. Um, so that's what it is. And it has a buffer switch, which is cool. Yep. Then we've got the BD2 from Boss. Which is a firm favourite. I is. remember my friend had one of these when I was like 14. They always and sound good. Like, so cool, yeah. yeah they really, always really just worked as that yep. pedal. Uh, we've got the Phase uh, 95, which was uh, a relatively recent release from MXR. It, it has both the 45 and the 90 in it with the script switch as well, so... They should have called it the 135. 
<laughs> it's got everything in it that MXR have done with regards to the face stuff. It just does the job. And I've got this on, I believe this is with the switch pushed in. I think that's the 90. So okay. it's a deeper sound. Well, that's the old school version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then we've got the MXR Dynacomp Mini. And that's the Mini, yeah. Yeah. And again, this has an attack switch, which we have pushed in so that the effect hits quicker. doesn't give you quite such a big transient at the front. Uh, sensitivity was really high up, and then you can ride the output as you need to. Straight out into the Vox AC15 with the green back speaker. And this is one of our, I'd say a firm favourite in sound like. It never lets us down does the AC15, especially and for th bands like this. And I think we prefer the green back to the Alnico Blue. Yeah, although oh, the, no, the Alnico Blue is the one we like. totally the wrong way around. We hate this amp. <laughs> we don't hate this amp. I'm this is more affordable. The only difference is the speaker. And to be fair, speakers make a huge difference, but the Greenback has done a wonderful job for us. I've got to say as well, with all these pedals, we didn't really have... We had about a penny to spare, but not too many. Yeah. We, we wouldn't have been able to afford the Alnico Blue. Yeah, saying that we're out, we are really hitting the budget bang on yeah, with this. Yeah. It sounds good. It's straight in. This is what we've got. So we are using reverb from the... Great. Lovely. It's glassy. Smooth. That's what the Vox does. Yeah, yeah. You know? Has that spank, that, that precision. It is worth pointing out that the top cut is almost all the way in. So you'd be right. getting a hell of a lot of brightness if we yeah, didn't. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Cool. Well, let's start adding pedals one at a time. Okay. Starting with the compressor. Mm hmm. <laughs> You can hear immediately it hits because the attack switch is in. Do you want to, do you want to try that, that tune? Pulls it together. Nice. And then phase. Yep. Nice. And it's like almost there. But then you need this. Yeah. Blues driver, the gain's really low on it. But with that, and then the compressor pulling all of it together. And then if you wanted, you could add the tape machine on top. It's because we've had did quite a lot of that in the mix. It's pushing the guitar back into yeah. it in the mix a bit. So you're getting that airy, tanky sound. It's like a hot tub of tone. Yeah. You just want to get in. Yeah. So we, if, we move, <laughs> if we move back the level, yeah, you can do... Oh. 
Okay. Okay, let's see if we can try the fuzz, the MXR. The idea with the fuzz was to give us the clippy overloaded thing. Yeah, and it was a bit of a weird sound in that you're playing with octaves. Yeah. And kind of trying to get a, a fluffy, fuzzy undercurrent with some note clarity going on on the top. Yeah, so that... <laughs> there but it needed more life to it is that blues driver yeah so it's really it was a combination of everything um when you put the dynacomp in it should tie it up a bit more adds a bit more body yeah it's nice the blues driver should push it more But when As, you put the tape machine in, go on then. Because the added gain from the repeats gives you that overloaded sound. Like... So the idea is, to be fair, those weren't the settings we had for no, the was gonna say, episode, but it, it's close. It took us a while to get exactly on it. Yeah, and, and that's we, the first one we did, so we messed with it. We did. That's the thing. See ya, everyone. pedal here is the boss. I was just about to say, it'd make so a really funny. compact pedal board. Yeah, it would make a super compact pedal board. tiny pedal trains like the, that. The pedals are good quality, which I like. Yeah. All the pedals are good quality. The guitar's great quality. Yeah, in fact, the whole um, rig's yeah. are good quality. And we've hit under budget. Um, and I think, um, dare I say it, I haven't heard it back through the speakers for what the mic's picked up, but in the room, you this, have. this has been one of the closest in a long time for yeah. me. I feel like we've got yeah. uh, to, to authentic tones. And I know we album. always say it, but you can get a lot of different sounds from a rig like this. There's, yeah. there's many, many kind of combinations you can play with. It's fun forever. Yeah. Well, there you go. There is Sound Like Tame Impala without busting the bank. Yes. Let us know how you think we did. We think we did excellently, as did Pete, who's <laughs> cheering in the background. And we finished early, which is another bonus. So, thanks. You always finish early. Ha! Ah. So let us know how you think we did, and if there's anyone else you'd like us to try our damnedest to sound like. Yep, links to all this gear will be in the description box below. Yes, it will. And I've been Rabia. And I've been Matt. And this has been Sound Like. Or Anderton's Television. <laughs>